Welcome back. Sharon is back, and we're going to continue our lesson on how to identify the base color of your paint. Sharon, let's recap what you talked about earlier, because I had not quite a good lesson there. We know we need to compare our neutrals <laughs> to other neutrals to really see the color temperature. Now let's go to the next level and determine the undertone. Now why is undertone important? Well, you know what, Trace, undertones are so important if you see them or if you, you can sort of think about them existing, it helps to prevent um, mismatching of neutrals, which is pretty common. So we remember our neutrals are not really that neutral. Our favorite beiges, grays, taupes, whatever you want to call them, they actually have underlying colors. We have a whole <laughs> bunch of neutrals here, Sharon, and when I take a look at them, you're right, it's really difficult to sort of pull out the differences when you're just looking at one individually. Yes, when you just look at one individually, it's hard to tell, but when you look at that big wall of color behind you, you can see those ones are not so subtle, right? We've got all six of the artist color wheel colors on there. And what I wanna do is think about those as our undertones for this purpose. And then those six that you have, the six neutrals that you have laying out, think of those as corresponding to some of those or to each of, each of those will correspond to one of those undertone colors. So I thought for fun, we could do a little color speed dating. <laughs> and we'll see Tracy. <laughs> it's a good, good theme. We'll see if you can take those neutrals and remember to compare them. You've got them all laying out in front of you, so compare them because that's key. And then try and pair them up with their undertone. I put little holes on them so you can hang them up on the nail and we'll see if you can pair them up with their, with their, um, with their undertone, with their color. Okay, I'm gonna what try. I'm gonna try. So some of them to <laughs> me seem a little right. obvious. I'm gonna put that one over there. Yes. I'm going to put this one here. And then we'll go through it, everyone, uh, together. But uh, this is just me. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. I'm going to go for yellow with this one. And th this one is so not the red, but I was. Oh. this is what I was left with. Okay, so uh, this is See? what I have done. What do I do now? Okay. So they all look neutral to me. So how about you start with the red and I put a little cheat sticker on the back and tell me what the color is, what the letter is. <gasps> I got it right, it's an R, Cher. You did, yay! Awesome, way to go. So that's barren plain, really beautiful, neutral with a kind of a red brown undertone. That's why it was tricky, Tracy, because we don't make paint with just the, these pigments. I'm kind of simplifying the whole process here, but you get the idea when you see the color, if you look at your color wheel, you can match them. So let's see how you did with orange. Okay, <laughs> let's see how I did. I actually didn't even cheat this time. It's orange. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> So that, that's muslin, which is actually a very popular neutral. I kind of think of it as a light and lively beige, so it's a more contemporary beige. So let's see about the yellow undertone. This one's tricky, so. Yes, I nailed the yellow. The yellow one was kind of obvious to me. The yellow, <laughs> the blue, and the green were sort of obvious to me. So um, it were was obvious. these two I was worried yeah. about, but I got it. Awesome, way to go. So that was jute. That's one of my favorite mm. yellow undertone neutrals. Um, let's move on to green. You got it. Green, I got green. So this is, uh, if oh, you're looking Tracy. for a neutral. I know, I'm very proud of myself. If you're looking for a neutral that's gonna lean towards the green, that's definitely it. And what's that one called, Cher? That is C. Hayes. And that's why I didn't let you see the names because yeah. I thought it might give it away. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Although, okay, so that's a darker one. C. Hayes, I probably would have thought blue. Dun, da, da, da. And this one, blue, I got blue. So, uh, and this to me was the most obvious one of them awesome. all. What, what's that one called? That one's called silver gray, and you're absolutely right, Tracy, and that's why the names can be deceiving, because I always look at that, and I think there's nothing gray about that. Let's see about the purple. That A lot of people don't love purples, but let's see what you think about this neutral purple. So very interesting. Like, this is the palest of all pale uh, purples, which I think a lot of people would be yeah. very comfortable with, because... There are folks that step away from purple, even though it's having a moment. Like, purple's been hot for a couple of years, but the neutral's lovely. What's that called? That one's called Cement Gray, and it is really lovely. And I think if you know you want a purple undertone gray, 
That one is gorgeous. And I think it looks really nice with the really popular weathered gray woods that we've been seeing a lot of. So again, you really want to think about the vibe that you're looking for in a space and find the undertone of the color that will work with everything you have and it will bring you that it will bring you that feel in your space. Okay, very good. So this is a great lesson when it comes to undertone uh, and color and neutrals. You've got another lesson for us as well when it comes to lighting. Yes. You know what, Tracy? Lighting is a biggie. So we've talked about how much color is relative to the other colors in a space. So when we look at our neutrals and compare them, we really get a good feel for it. But then in, in your home, the lighting changes throughout the day if you have a lot of natural light that really impacts our perception of color and will make the color change along with the lighting. But then at nighttime, with all of our artificial lighting, and these days people still have a mix of incandescent, they have LEDs, they don't know whether to buy warm or cool, you can look like you changed your whole paint scheme by changing your light bulbs, which can be good or bad. <laughs> but <laughs> let me just show you an example of that. I actually painted our favorite Revere Pewter, our nice neutral warm gray from before, and you can see under the warm lighting, the warm light bulb, it pulls out the warm undertones, but when I put it under a cooler light, um, it really makes it look great. It almost looks more like Coventry gray. So again, when you think about all of these things, comparing color, thinking about color in relation to the other colors of materials in your decor, lighting is huge. And if you don't think about the lighting, you're probably gonna get it wrong. So I would say, make sure you try that color at home with all your things. Don't change your light bulbs after you after you change your paint colors, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you're just, you're not allowed. Keep the same color temperature at least. Now, no. all of this, such important things to consider. Here are my takeaway notes from today's Professor Sharon lecture. Neutrals are generally made up of other colors that give it an undertone. Neutrals can be warm or cool depending on undertone. Don't view colors in isolation, folks. Always compare to detect the temperature, undertone, and lighting can accentuate the undertone. How did I do, Sharon? Do I pass? Do I get my degree on this? Awesome, Tracy. You totally get your degree. You get honors because you got the quiz right, too, with the undertone. So <laughs> the only thing that I want to add, again, is that we've kind of made it easier for you to test out those colors at home. You can buy these little small samples in any color that you want. You can buy three, five, two, one. I've got two right now. I can tell you I'm going to get another one to try them out. But it is the best way, really, whether you paint it on a small or big board and move it around your house at different times of the day, or you paint it on the wall like I'm doing, it really, really will help you to distinguish which one is going to be lighter or darker, which one's going to be cooler or warmer, and which one's really going to be right for you. So good luck. <laughs> oh, another great lesson, Sharon. Thank you so much for that. Really well.